Hello my dear students one of the famous quotes by Dr Seuss says you can find magic wherever you look sit back and relax all you need is a book i'm sure kids that you all have found magic in the previous chapter the wizard of oz 1 of your course book kids the chapters the wizard of oz 1 and the wizard of oz 2 of your course book are adapted from the famous novel the wonderful wizard of oz the novel is written by l frank baum kids he wrote 14 novels in the oz series children by reading the wizard of oz 1 you all might have got familiar with dorothy her friends the scarecrow who wants a brain the tin woodman who wants a heart the lion who wants courage and of course the great wizard of oz who to our surprise was the little old man hidden behind the screen that stood in a corner of the throne room right and when dorothy and her friends got to know about the truth of the great wizard of oz they got angry on how the wizard of oz has fooled everyone for so long to which the wizard of oz requested all of them to not to disclose his secret to anyone and began to tell his story kids let's now read the chapter the wizard of oz 2 from your course book and find out what tale did the wizard of oz tell to dorothy and her friends so they sat down and listened while the oz told the following tale i was born in omaha when i grew up I became a ventriloquist and at that I was very well trained by a great master I can imitate any kind of a bird or beast Kids ventriloquist is a person who speaks without moving his lips and makes it seem as if his voice is coming from somewhere else Just take a look on the picture to get a better idea Master is a person who is skilled at something Imitate means to copy someone. Beast is a large or dangerous animal. So kids, the chapter begins by the tale of the Wizard of Oz. He told Dorothy and her friends that he was born in Omaha and when he grew up he became a ventriloquist and he was trained by a great master. And he also told them that he could copy, he could take out the voice of any bird or any dangerous animal without even moving his lips children since this chapter is for scene passage for comprehension let's keep discussing the antonyms of few words side by side here we have got the word trained so the antonym for trained would be untrained here he mewed so like a kitten that toto pricked up its ears and looked everywhere to see where it was after a time continued the oz I was tired of that and I became a balloonist. Kids pricked up its ears means the dog's ears got raised by the voice. And the antonym for continued is discontinued. So kids the wizard of oz had just given a demo that what did he used to do and then he told that after some time he became a balloonist. What is that? asked Dorothy. A person who goes up in a balloon on circus day so as to draw a crowd of people and get them to pay to see the circus he explained Oh she said I know it's when the wizard of oz told dorothy and her friends that he became a balloonist dorothy asked him what is the meaning of balloonist and then the wizard explained that a person who goes up in a hot air balloon on a circus day to draw the crowd kids draw here means to attract the crowd so he told them that he used to attract the crowd and convince them to pay to see the circus and then dorothy understood who is a balloonist well one day i went up in a balloon and the ropes got twisted so i couldn't come down again for a day and a night i traveled through the air on the morning of the second day the balloon came down gradually i found myself in the midst of strange people who seeing me coming from the clouds thought i was a great wizard of course i let them think so because 
They were afraid of me and promised to do anything I wished them to. Kids, twisted here means turned untangled. It can be used in a sentence as Rita twisted balloons into the shapes of different animals. Kids, gradually here means slowly. Kids, let's take a look on antonyms now. The antonym for found would be lost and the antonym for strange would be familiar. So here, the wizard of Oz continues telling his story to Dorothy and her friends. And he tells them that one day when he went up in the hot air balloon to gather people for the circus, he could not come down as the ropes of the hot air balloon got twisted. And for a day and night, he travelled through the air. That means he was up there in the sky for a day and a night. And on the second morning, the balloon came down slowly. And when the balloon came down, he found himself surrounded by strange people who thought that he was a great wizard since he came from the clouds. And he was so clever that he let those people think that he was a wizard. Why? Because they were afraid of him and the people who were strange to him, they had promised him to do anything he wished. Just to amuse myself and keep the good people busy, I ordered them to build the city and my palace. They did it all willingly and well. Then I thought, as the country was so green and beautiful, I would call it the Emerald City. To make the name fit better, I put green spectacles on all the people so that everything they see is green. Children palace is a home of a king or a queen and willingly means ready to do something. When you do something with your wish, that means you are doing it willingly. The antonym for build would be demolish and better would be worse. Kids, the wizard continues to tell that just to amuse himself that means just to entertain himself and to keep the people busy he ordered them to build the city and his palace and the people did it with their wish and they did it very well that means they did it very nicely and then when the city was built the wizard thought that the city was so beautiful and green that he should call it the emerald city Kids, emerald is a precious stone which is of bright green color. Since the city was green, so he called it the emerald city. And he told everyone to put green spectacles so that everything they see is green. Just to make the name fit better for the city. But isn't everything here green? Asked Dorothy. No more than in any other city, replied the O's. But... When you wear the green spectacles, everything you see looks green to you. One of my greatest fears were the witches. For a while, I had no magical powers at all. I soon found out that the witches were really able to do wonderful things. There were four of them in this country and they ruled the people who lived in the north and south and east and west. Fortunately, the witches of the north and south were good and I knew they would do me no harm. But the witches of the east and west were terribly wicked and had they not thought I was more powerful than they themselves, they would surely have destroyed me. I am happy that you have destroyed both the witches. So when the Wizard of Oz told Dorothy and her friends about how the Emerald City was built, Dorothy asked the wizard, isn't everything in the city actually green? To which the wizard replied that the city was as green as any other city and everything appeared green when you wear the green spectacles. And then he continued telling his story and told that one of his greatest fears were the witches. Why? Because he did not have any magical power and the witches were doing wonderful things with their magic. And there were four witches who used to rule the people who lived in north, south, east and west. And fortunately that means luckily the witches of north and south were very good. And 
the wizard knew that these witches are not going to harm him but the witches who used to live in east and west were terribly wicked it's wicked means evil so they were terribly evil and he knew that if they come to know that the wizard did not have magical powers they would surely have destroyed him and he also added that he was very happy that dorothy and her friends have destroyed the witches of east and west children let's also discuss the antonyms which have come in this paragraph so the antonym for witches would be angels found would be lost wonderful would be awful ruled would be served and the antonym for wicked is kind i think you are a very bad man said dorothy oh no my dear i am really a very good man but i am a very bad wizard i must admit can't you give me brains asked the scarecrow kids a scarecrow is a puppet like thing which is made to stand in the fields to scare away the birds and here the scarecrow is speaking that means it is depicted as a human being so whenever we depict a non living thing as a human being that figure of speech is personification and the antonym for admit is deny you don't need them you are learning something every day a baby has brains but it doesn't know much experience is the only thing that brings knowledge and the longer you are on earth the more experience you are sure to get students now dorothy says to the wizard that he's a very bad man to which the wizard told her that no he's not a bad man he's a very good man but he's a very bad wizard and he has accepted that and then the scarecrow asks the wizard whether he could give him brain or not to which he said that you do not need brain that means the scarecrow doesn't need a brain because the scarecrow is learning something every day and then he explains that as a baby has a brain but does not know anything only the experience teaches everything to the baby similar is the case with the scarecrow that the longer he will be there on the earth the wiser he will get by getting the experience day by day kids experience means the knowledge or the skills which are gained over the period of time that may all be true said the scarecrow but i shall be very unhappy unless you give me brains the false wizard looked at him carefully well he said with a sigh come to me tomorrow morning i will stuff your head with brains i cannot tell you how to use them however you must find that out for yourself so when the wizard explains to the scarecrow about all the wisdom experience and brains the scarecrow replied that yes it might all be true but he would be very unhappy if the wizard does not give him brains to which the wizard looked at him very carefully and said that he should come to the wizard tomorrow and the wizard will stuff the brain in his head and he will not tell him how to use the brains but the scarecrow has to find out the way to use the brains oh thank you thank you cried the scarecrow i will find a way to use them never fear but how about my courage asked the lion anxiously you have plenty of courage i'm sure answered oz All you need is confidence in yourself. There is no living thing that is not afraid when it faces danger. True courage is in facing danger when you are afraid and that kind of courage you have in plenty. And then the scarecrow became very happy and he said thank you to the wizard and he said that yes of course he will find out the way to use the brains and then the lion asked in a worried manner about his courage as he was expecting to get courage from the wizard and then the wizard told that the lion had plenty of courage and the lion needed confidence 
and he explained that there is no living thing in this world which is not afraid of anything and then he said that the true courage is in facing the danger perhaps i have but i'm scared just the same said the lion i shall really be very unhappy unless you give me the sort of courage that makes one forget he's afraid very well i will give you that sort of courage tomorrow replied the oz so here the lion is asking the wizard that if the wizard will not give him that sort of courage that he's not scared of anything then the lion will become very unhappy to which the wizard replied that he will give him courage the next day the antonym for forget is remember and sort here is used as a noun which means a group or a type of people or things that are similar in a particular way for example what sort of sweets would you like to have that means it is depicting a particular category how about my heart asked the tin woodman why as for that answered the oz i think you are wrong to want a heart it makes most people unhappy if you only knew it you are in luck not to have a heart that must be a matter of opinion said the tin woodman for my part i will bear all the unhappiness without a murmur if you will give me a heart it's without a murmur is an idiom which means without complaining about anything and then tin woodman asked about the heart he wanted to which the oz replied that he would be wrong to ask about a heart because according to the wizard heart makes the people unhappy as the people get hurt and the tin woodman would feel himself lucky not to have a heart to which tin woodman replied that it's all the matter of opinion that means it's all individual opinion and if tin woodman would have a heart he would bear all the unhappiness without complaining about it and he wanted that the wizard should give a heart to him very well answered the oz meekly come to me tomorrow and you shall have a heart I have played wizard for so many years that I might as well continue the part a little longer. Kids answered meekly means he answered very gently. And then the wizard of Oz told the tin woodman to come the very next day and he will give him a heart. And he told him that he has played wizard for so many years and he might continue to act as a wizard. for a little bit longer now said dorothy how am i to get back to kansas we shall have to think about that replied the little man there is only one thing i ask in return for my help such as it is you must keep my secret and tell no one i am a humbug and now dorothy asks the wizard about how he is planning to send her back to kansas to which the little old man replied that he had to think about it and he requested only one thing in return that they should keep his secret and they should not tell anybody that he was a liar they agreed to say nothing of what they had learnt and went back to their rooms in high spirits even dorothy had hoped that the great and terrible humbug as she called him would find a way to send her back to kansas and if he did she was willing to forgive him for everything let's let's take a look on few antonyms here so the antonym for agreed would be disagreed antonym for hope is despair the antonym for willing would be unwilling so dorothy and her friends agreed upon not telling anything about the wizard to anyone and they went back to their rooms and they were very excited and dorothy was even willing to forgive the wizard of oz if he could find a way to send dorothy back to kansas the wizard gives the scarecrow brains the lion courage and the tin woodman a heart as for dorothy he plans to take her to kansas in a balloon dorothy finds toto chasing a kitten and gets down to catch it Before she can come back the ropes break and the wizard 
float away alone. Her three friends try to help her to reach Kansas. She, however, uses her silver shoes to return home. The Tin Woodman stays in the Wicked Witch's land as their king. The Scarecrow stays in the Emerald City as the ruler and the lion goes back to the forest as the king of the forest. At home, Dorothy finds that her silver shoes are lost in flight, never to be found again. So kids, this is how the story finishes. And we have learned from the story that every person has the ability to do everything. Only he or she has to discover it.